my name is Charles Conway, and uh, <clears throat> Michelle has covered, uh, you know, why was this place selected out here. And look at look what you see. This is what they had to build out here to house these workers. Now, they needed more than barracks for them to live in. They had to have schools, they had to have hospitals, they had to have put in all the utilities. And that's a lot of people, whenever you think about it, what was done out here. And she said that it was completed in, in September of 43, and the first shovel full of dirt out here was in March of 43. And the thing about it, we, when we talk about Hanford, one of the amazing things was from, from the time they sh put that first shovel of dirt in there, it took 18 months to build all of this. Now, you can't even get a permit in 18 months. Now, <laughs> in fact, the cleanup, it's going to take them another 50 years to get all their permits out here. But anyway, uh, it was exciting for me because I was a young fellow, 15 years old, and ever, there was a lot of activity. They built a big theater, they built a shopping center out here, uh, they had a, a commissary, they put in a big tent. Uh, the first theater they had here had a six foot a board fence around it, and a fellow would come over here from Sunnyside and show you movies at night, and you sat on a backless wood bench, and you paid two bits to watch the movie. The next thing they did is they brought in a huge circus tent. And here we had full size screen and everything, you know, but there was always a big line. The only time there wasn't a big line at the tent was on Sunday morning when Father Sweeney came out here to say mass. <laughs> uh, and uh, as we approach uh, White Bluffs here, now Hanford was a was a small farming community, soft fruits, mostly soft fruits, cherries, apricots, and this sort of stuff. And White Bluff was it when I went there, it hadn't they, the government hadn't destroyed anything in White Bluff. And it reminded me of something right out of Tom Sawyer. And it was really amazing. And I used to come over here and go uh, fishing, bass fishing and ice skating on in, in the winter time but uh, I never I, I, I spent a few days overnight at White Bluffs but now let's get back <clears throat> I, I when I came here I was a sophomore in high school started a sophomore and we rode a bus to Richland every day to go to school they had the Hanford High School but that was an elementary school so I rode the bus every day to, uh, to Richland to go to school. And this was exciting, especially for the boys and the girls, because every Monday morning when you went to school, there was about 50 or 60 new students. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, the boys would look at the girls, and the girls would look at the boys. But uh, anyway, they changed that. When we went to school, we went in a regular school bus. Now, later, they came out with a cattle car. Now the cattle cars was a was a regular a truck cab with a huge trailer behind it that had windows and seats in it. Now at this time, when we were in the bus, the driver could keep some kind of distance. But now when we got back there by ourselves, I'll tell you, I learned that girls knew how to cuss. <laughs> now any question? Yeah. Well, since 43, except when I was in the service. Oh, so you've been here the whole time. Yes, oh, okay. I came in okay. here in May of 43 and lived for a year in the barracks at Camp Ham. Oh, okay. Yeah. Any other questions? Yeah. Talk about the secrecy, about what you couldn't talk about. Did you know, did you ask about it? Well, you mean when? Um, during the camp, oh, people during... couldn't talk about what they were Oh, no, no, you could not. You could. See, the, the workers out here, they, they knew nothing what they were doing. Everything is you had to be a need to know. So people were told, the supervisors were told, the managers were told all they needed to know and when they knew. They didn't know what they were going to do next week, but they knew what they were going to do today. They didn't know what it was going to be for. They had no idea. And as far as I know, I don't think that security was ever breached uh, if it was, it wasn't ever reported that any uh, agents got in here to do any uh, sabotage or anything. But uh, the, 
security was real strict. Of course, I didn't know anything. I was schoolboy. But the, you were not allowed to talk about this job at all, anywhere. And the government had a bunch of plain clothesmen in the bars and restaurants and so forth. And if they heard anybody talking about Hanford, that was the end of their job. Okay? Okay. Yeah. Did you work here for 40 years? Yeah. What did you do? Oh, okay. For, for, uh, for uh, let's see, 25 years or so, I was in the chemical processing. I worked in the, these uh, plants that you'll see in the east area and west area where they, they took these uh, metals and put them in the liquid and got the plutonium out of it. Okay. Then after that, I went into the training organization. So I was in the training organization for over 12 years. Okay? All right. Yeah. So the workers who came and lived at the barracks, they were all kinds of workers, right? They're scientists or skilled workers. What? And how did they live together? You know. The... Well, okay. <laughs> she could tell you about the barracks. Anyway, the barracks, <laughs> they were built in a huge age, okay? And I would say there was probably 80 or so rooms in these ages, okay? Every room was about 10 by 10 and had two army cots in it and had a door on it, and you had a roommate. Now, fortunately, my dad was my roommate. So, and then uh, the women's, the women's area of barracks had a huge barbed wire fence uh, surrounding it, you know? And, uh, yeah, the women had seven barracks. And this wasn't to keep, this wasn't to keep the people in, it was to keep the men out. No men were allowed into the women's area. They were, what if they were married? Uh, uh, they went down to the river. <laughs> so what did your dad do? On the My dad night? was a sign painter. Oh, what? Sign painter. Oh, okay. Yeah. A lost art today. Okay, you've had it now. Come on. Thank you so much. And she's doing it. Hey. She's, doing it. she's doing an excellent job. In fact, I just spent two and a half years writing my memoirs where I cover all this uh, oh. uh, for the family only. But I've read a lot of her stuff and I got a lot of information, you know, statistical information. And she knows it. Thank you so much.